Mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, cousins of course, mops and pops, or if you prefer, grandmas and grandpas, and baseball fans everywhere, welcome to the 2019 season of the Valley League. Before we get to tonight's game, let me let you know that these live streams are brought to you by Sheets. Sheets is perfect for busy lifestyles, and they're open 24-7, so grab breakfast, dinner on the go, or a late night snack. With nearly 600 stores in six states, there's always a Sheets near you. Sheets, run and done. This live stream is also brought to you by Subway. Check out Subway's delicious new club collection, the new State Club, the new Southwest Chicken Club, and the American Club. Subway, make it what you want. This live stream is also brought to you by Grace Burroughs, New York Times best-selling author and baseball friend to the Valley Baseball League. Grace Burroughs, she believes in love and baseball. Bottom line, if you can't find love on the baseball diamond, take a look at graceburrows.com. Now, here are your announcers with tonight's game. It's a beautiful afternoon for baseball in Cary, North Carolina. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our broadcast of this 2019 Southern Collegiate Baseball Prospect Showcase. I'm Matthew Atkins. For those of you that don't know me, I am the voice of the Harrisonburg Turks, and I'll be bringing you tonight's action as the Valley Baseball League takes on the Southern Collegiate Baseball League. We are at Coleman Field in the USA Baseball National Training Complex, and we're just a few moments away from tonight's first pitch in the 2019 Prospect Showcase. It's a very exciting event that we get to be here at this week. It's the third year in a row that the Valley Baseball League has attended this event and they've done pretty well over the past two years. They have never lost a game here at this showcase, although they have tied once. But they look to continue that perfect streak as they take on the Southern Collegiate Baseball League in the first game of this week's action. They will be getting underway about 4 p.m., so just a few minutes away from the first pitch in tonight's game. This is a tremendous honor for these players to be here, but they have picked the best of the best from around the Valley League to be in this showcase this week. And they get to come down here to Cary, North Carolina. They rode the bus down left from Harrisonburg at about 8 o'clock, picked up the Waynesboro and Charlottesville players in Waynesboro around 8.30, and then made the trek down through Virginia and North Carolina and got here this afternoon and took batting practice and infield and outfield. And now they're having the home plate meeting with the umpires and getting ready to get underway. And it's a really beautiful setting, as you can see, all of you watching on Facebook Live. You can see the field that we are playing at here and the area around it. You walk in and you're greeted by the posters and flyers from past Team USA players, including Chris Archer, Mike Trout, Andrew McCutcheon. And it's just a magnificent feeling being in this ballpark and knowing that some of the players that we see in tonight's game could be on the level of those players that you see on the posters when you walk in. So it's a very exciting event that we are at this evening. We have the Valley Baseball League lineup as they are getting ready to get underway. They will be the away team in the game tonight. And leading off for the Valley League, playing left field is going to be Aiden Nagel. Nagel from the Woodstock River Bandits. Batting second, the designated hitter Thomas Francisco of the Charlottesville Tom Sox. Batting third, the catcher Wes Clark. Clark of the Waynesboro Generals. Batting fourth, the first baseman Andrew Check from the Stanton Braves. Batting fifth, the right fielder Dominic Baselli from the Covington Lumberjacks. Batting sixth, the center fielder Jackson Tate, also of the Waynesboro Generals. Batting seventh, or batting eighth, excuse me. Batting seventh, the third baseman, Christian Torres. Torres from the Covington Lumberjacks. Batting eighth, the shortstop, William Escala from the Woodstock River Bandits. Batting ninth, the second baseman, Kobe Lopez of the Waynesboro Generals. And on the mound for the Valley Baseball League in this afternoon's ball game is Devin Hemingway from the Charlottesville Tom Sox. So players from all around the league will be taking the field as we get ready for tonight's game here in just a few moments. 
And let's take a look at this Valley Baseball League roster. There are players from Charlottesville, Covington, Harrisonburg, Stanton, Strasburg, Waynesboro, Winchester, Woodstock, and Purcellville representing the league in this showcase. Harrisonburg leads the league with six players on the team. Waynesboro has four representatives, and Charlottesville and Woodstock each with three. The rest of the teams either have two or one representative here in this weekend showcase. So we are just a few moments away from the first pitch. Valley League is the away team, so they will be batting first in the top of the first inning. They finished up the home plate meeting, and it looks as if the Southern Collegiate Baseball League is getting ready to take the field, although they have not introduced the starting lineups yet. I believe they are just getting ready to do that. See lots of parents, friends, families attending this weekend's festivities. And down in front of us, in front of the press box, plenty of scouts here to watch the prospects participating in this weekend's games. As these are the best of the best from multiple summer collegiate leagues around the country. In addition to the Southern Collegiate Baseball League and the Valley League, there will be a couple of other leagues here this weekend, including the Florida League, the Sun Belt League, and the Cal Ripken League. So they will all be here participating in this weekend showcase as well. Tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m., the Valley League will take on the Florida League in the second game that they will play this week. So they're playing the Southern League tonight at 4, and then tomorrow at 9.30 in the morning they play the Florida League. So two games this week for the Valley League. And they're introducing the starting lineups. We're going to go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we'll be a few minutes closer to first pitch in tonight's game between the Valley Baseball League and the Southern Collegiate Baseball League. So at Sheets, we really exist to make people's lives easier every day. In this moment, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to connect with some of our lucky fans to help make their dreams come true. How are you? I'm Ryan Sheets. Here's a brand new truck for you, man. A once-in-a-lifetime dream vacation to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been anywhere. <laughs> a check for $25,000. This is a testament to why everybody should be a Sheets for you. Take me out to the ball game. Oh, wait, we're already here. Barry Lee and Katie G, hoping you're enjoying the old ball game and inviting you to join us each weekday morning from 5 to 10 a.m. on your 92.5 Wink FM. You gotta see Ryan at Steve and Toyota. Where every new Toyota car, truck, van, and SUV is smile priced now to save you more. And every certified used Toyota on the lot is also smile priced at Steve and Toyota. Where you get more for your trade, more credit options to help you get approved, and exceptional service after the sale, too. If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steve and Toyota. Hey baseball fans, Graham Knight here with the Valley Baseball League and I want to take a second to introduce you to a close personal friend of mine, Grace Burroughs. She's a New York Times best-selling author, but she's also a close personal friend of yours even though you may not know it. In fact, without Grace's help, we would not have been able to bring you the playoffs and championships last year. 
Thanks to her, we were able to cover every single game. And thanks to her, this year we had all the gear we need to support 11 different sites throughout the Shenandoah Valley. Take a second and look at her latest book, When a Duchess Says I Do. Grace Burroughs, she believes in love and baseball. If you can't find romance on the baseball diamond, take a look at graceburrows.com backslash bookshelf. And if you've already got the love of your life, good for you. Drop Grace a line and let her know that you really appreciate her help with these live streams. It would mean a lot to her. Now back to the action. They finished up the national anthem. They've introduced the starting lineups, and now the Southern Collegiate Baseball League is taking the field. And we are just a few moments away from the first pitch in tonight's game, the first game of the 2019 Southeast Collegiate Prospect Showcase, featuring five summer collegiate baseball leagues from around the country, including the Cal Ripken League, the Sun Belt League, the Florida League, and tonight's matchup between the Southern Collegiate Baseball League and the Valley Baseball League. Before the break, we introduced to you the starting lineup for the Valley League tonight, and we have now the starting lineup for the Southern League tonight. Leading off and playing second base will be R.J. Connor. Batting second at third base will be Drew Iniesta. Batting third, playing shortstop is Mark Engel. Batting fourth, the designated hitter is Scotty Lee. Batting fifth, the catcher Tyler McPeak. Batting sixth at first base is Seth McAuley. Batting 7th in right field is J.D. Funk. Batting 8th in left field is Collins Robinson. Batting ninth, the designated hitter is Ben Wettenhall. And batting 10th in center field is Asar Rankin. And on the mound for the Southern Collegiate League tonight is Daniel Bagwell. So he is on the mound taking his warm-up pitches as he prepares to face Aiden Nagel from the Valley League. Nagel representing the Woodstock River Bandits. And he will stroll up to the plate and get things started. Nagel brings a batting average of 419 into this game. He also has eight home runs and 26 RBIs on the season. So like I said, this is the best of the best in the Valley League. He ranks third in batting average, and he's up there in home runs and RBIs as he digs into the left-handed batter's box to kick things off. Facing Daniel Bagwell on the mound. He comes set and fires the first pitch in there. And it's in there for a called strike. Nothing in one to Nagel. Bagwell from the Carolina Vipers. He is 2-0 on the season with a 107 ERA as the 0-1 pitch Misses inside, and the count evens up at 1-1. One and one. He has 34 strikeouts. Excuse me, make that 14 strikeouts on the season for the Vipers. The 1-1 one, one pitch swung on and missed, and now it's 1-2 and two to Nagel. The Valley League taking the field in their white pants and blue jerseys that say Valley Baseball League across the front with white lettering. As the 1-2 pitch is fired in there, and it's High and outside, and the count will even up at two balls and two strikes. The Southern Collegiate League are wearing their usual team uniforms, so not, a, not one uniform for the whole league, but each team is wearing their own team uniforms, so plenty 
of variety around the players as the 2-2 pitch misses low, and it's a full count to Nagel. We've got some teal jerseys, some black and yellow, some black and gray camo. The 3-2 pitch lined into right field, and that goes foul in the corner, and the count's going to stay at 3-2. and two. Some red jerseys out there. All kinds of jerseys and colors for the Southern Collegiate League. A 3-2 count at the plate. Bagwell. And the umpire calls time. And Nagel will step back into the box. And the 3-2 pitch on the way. And that's a called strike three. He offered a little check swing, and it's strike three. Nagel goes down for the first out of the game. Now Thomas Francisco is coming up to the plate. He's the designated hitter for the Valley League in this afternoon's ball game, representing the Charlottesville Tom Sox, and he is on an absolute tear right now for the Tom Sox. First pitch, he grounds it down towards third base, the throw over to first, and they get him in time for the out. So two down in the inning, and Wes Clark is going to come up to the plate. Clark, the catcher out of Waynesboro. Big home run hitter for the Generals as he has three on the season with 21 RBIs, and he's batting 367. First pitch on the way from Bagwell. A swing and a miss, and it's nothing in one to Clark. Bagwell comes set with the 0-1 pitch, and that one in there for a call strike, and it's nothing in two. Clark down in the count now. Two outs in the inning. Valley League leading off the top of the first. Here at Coleman Field, the USA Baseball National Training Complex. The 0-2 pitch on the way from Bagwell. Misses low and outside, and the count's going to move to 1-2. and two. Clark plays his college ball at the University of South Carolina. He's a native of Forest, Virginia, as the 1-2 pitch misses Hine inside, brushes him off the plate, and the count moves to 2-2. Two and two. The 2-2 pitch fired in there. A swing and a miss, and Clark goes down for the final out of the inning. A 1-2-3 inning for the Valley League in the top of the first. It'll be the top of the Southern League order coming up when we come back. Take me out to the ball game. Oh, wait, we're already here. Barry Lee and Katie G, hoping you're enjoying the old ball game and inviting you to join us each weekday morning from 5 to 10 a.m. on your 92.5 Wink FM. And we're back at Coleman Field for the bottom of the first inning in the Southern or Southeast Collegiate Prospect Showcase featuring the Valley Baseball League and the Southern Collegiate Baseball League, the Southern League coming up to the plate here in the bottom of the first. Leading off, it'll be R.J. Connor, Drew Iniesta, and Mark Engel. Southern Collegiate League going with a 10-batter lineup as they have an extra hitter and a designated hitter. And on the mound, they will face Dan Hemingway. 
for the Valley League. And Hemingway from the Charlottesville Tom Sox. First pitch in there to Connor. Misses outside. And it's a 1-0 count to R.J. Connor here in the bottom of the first inning. The 1-0 pitch, foul ball down the right field line, and the count evens up at 1-1. One one. Connor leading off for the Southern League in the bottom of the first inning. He drills the 1-1 one one pitch foul down the right field line, and the count moves to 1-2. and two. He'll step out of the box and dig back in, and he's ready for the 1-2 offering from Hemingway. He fires it in there, pop up. Shallow center field. Going back is the second baseman, Lopez, and he will make the catch for the first out of the inning. And that brings up the third baseman, number 26, Drew Iniesta. Drew from the Mooresville Spinners in the Southern Collegiate League. He's batting 368 on the season. And to go along with that, he's got three home runs and 19 RBIs. The first pitch on the way from Hemingway. That's a hard hit ground ball, but it goes foul down the first baseline. And the count moves to nothing and one. The 0-1 pitch from Hemingway, and that one's popped up, and it's going to land on the net in front of the press box. There's netting all around the home plate area. Now there's two baseballs fouled up there and a couple of pine cones. The one pitch, that one is hit foul down the third base line, and it's an 0-2 count to Inesta. One out in the bottom of the first. Hemingway fires the 0-2 pitch, and there a foul tip, and Inesta keeps the at-bat alive. Hemingway on the season for the Tom Sox. He's 1-0 in 18 innings pitched. Another foul ball this time down the first baseline. He struck out 14 batters and given up just two runs. He's got a even one ERA in those 18 innings. He's made four starts for Charlottesville. 0-2 count, the pitch on the way, and it misses inside, gets away from the catcher, Clark, and the count moves to a 1-2 to Inesta. Inesta plays his college ball at Irksign College. The 1-2 pitch fouled off right field side, and the count stays at 1-2. and two. He'll be a junior there this year, a native of Somerville, South Carolina. The 1-2 pitch from Hemingway, another foul ball, third base side this time, and he keeps the at-bat going yet again. And I think the umpire was out of baseball. He's had to get some more from the dugout. A 1-2 count. Seminway comes set on the mound, gets a sign from Clark in the pitch. Another foul tip. And Esta is doing everything he can to keep this at-bat going and try to get a hit for the Southern Collegiate League here. Waiting in the on-deck circle is the shortstop, Mark Engel. The 1-2 pitch misses outside, and the count evens up at two balls and two strikes to the third baseman, Inesta. Hemingway with another 2-2 offering, foul towards the Southern dugout. The Southern Collegiate League is largely made up of teams in the Charlotte, North Carolina metropolitan area. They have five teams in North Carolina and one in South Carolina. As the 2-2 pitch misses low and inside, and the count goes full to Inesta. Hemingway working up his pitch count on the, only the second batter of the game. 
The Piedmont Pride is the lone team in South Carolina in the Southern League as the 3-2 pitch gets Anesta swinging and he goes down for the second out of the inning. So Mark Engel will come up to the plate. He is batting 398 on the year for the Southern League. Takes a cut at the first pitch and misses. It's nothing in one. He plays for the Piedmont Pride, that team in South Carolina. 398 with 19 RBIs on the season. The 0-1 pitch from Hemingway catches the outside corner and it's one and one. Hemingway with the 0-2 pitch. It's popped up behind home play, and I think that's going to land on the net as well. Now it landed on top of the press box as you heard the crash. And now it's a 1-2 count. Two outs in the inning for Angle, the shortstop out of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. A hard hit ball over to Lopez at second base. He'll field it at the back of the infield dirt and make the throw to check at first to end the inning. The Valley League with a 1-2-3 inning in the bottom of the first, and we head to the top of the second here at Coleman Field. So at Sheets, we really exist to make people's lives easier every day. In this moment, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to connect with some of our lucky fans to help make their dreams come true. How are you? I'm Ryan Sheets. Here's a brand new truck for you, man. A once-in-a-lifetime <laughs> dream vacation to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been anywhere. A check for $25,000. This is a testament to why everybody should be a Sheets freak. If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steven Toyota, where every new Toyota car, truck, van, and SUV is smile priced now to save you more. And every certified used Toyota on the lot is also smile priced at Steven Toyota, where you get more for your trade, more credit options to help you get approved, and exceptional service after the sale, too. If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steven Toyota. We're getting ready for the top of the second inning in the Southeast College Baseball Prospect Showcase. Andrew Check leading it off for the Valley League here as they take on the Southern Collegiate Baseball League. Andrew Check, one of the biggest power hitters in the Valley League this season, as he has eight home runs on the season and 40 RBIs. He digs into the left-handed batter's box. The first pitch from Bagwell. That's a line drive going to drop into center field, but the catch is made by the center fielder, Osar Rankin. And there's one out in the inning. A diving catch from Rankin to rob Andrew Check of a base hit. And now Dominic Boselli, the right fielder out of Covington, will come up to the plate for the Valley League. Try to get things going here in the top of the second. Baselli is batting 305 on the year. He has three home runs and 21 RBIs. The first pitch in there for a called strike, nothing in one. Bagwell comes set. The 0 1 pitch on the way. Popped up center field again. Rankin coming in and drifting back is the shortstop angle, and he'll make the catch for the second out of the inning. Two down now, and nobody on for Jackson Tate. Jackson Tate, the center fielder out of Waynesboro. Was an all-star for the Valley League this year. He's batting 279 with four home runs and 24 RBIs. The first pitch from Bagwell, low and away, 1-0. I was talking before the game with John Leonard of all things Valley League. We were talking about the team and the players in this game, he said Jackson Tate is just one of the players with the most raw talent that you'll see in this league. As the 1-0 pitch is in there for a called strike, it's 1-1. One one. We were talking to 
a writer for D1Baseball.com, who's here to cover this showcase. The 1-1 pitch misses low, two balls and a strike. He said that he's noticed the Valley League has had a lot more talent. It's been deeper, more full of talent over the past couple of seasons. He said he was at this showcase last year to watch the Valley League, and now he's here again this year. The 2-1 pitch, Bagwell from the windup, fires it in there, and it misses high and inside. Three balls and a strike to Jackson Tate. As we play in the top of the second inning at the USA Baseball National Training Complex. The 3-1 pitch from Bagwell, a swing and a miss, and the count goes full to Tate. With two outs in the inning. Tate reaches a full count. The native of Pike Road, Alabama. The 3-2 pitch popped up right field side. Chasing after it is Funk, and he'll miss the catch as he dives toward at the foul line. Rounding second now, heading for third is Tate, and he's going to be in at third with a stand-up triple, the first hit of the ball game. For either team, as Jackson Tate, Hit a pop-up over towards right field, and J.D. Funk laid out for it, tried to make the catch, but just missed it. And that's a stand-up triple for the outfielder from Waynesboro. Now at the plate is the third baseman, Christian Torres, from Covington. Two outs in the inning, and he's got a runner on third. Bagwell working from the stretch now. The first pitch misses low. 1-0 to Torres. Torres attends University of Maryland, Baltimore County. He's a native of Miami, Florida. The 1-0 pitch from Bagwell, a foul ball behind home plate, and the count evens up at 1-1. One one. This past season at UMBC, he hit 276 with two home runs and 30 RBIs for the Retrievers. A 1-1 pitch on the way. Misses below his knees and two balls and a strike now to Torres. Bagwell peering in, awaiting the sign, and he comes set his glove out in front of him and now a step off the mound as he's keeping an eye on Jackson Tate over there at third base. Tate gave us the first hit of the ball game with the triple down the right field line. And now the 2-1 pitch to Torres misses outside. And he's facing a 3-1 count. With two outs in the inning. Scoreless ball game between the Valley League and the Southern Collegiate League. That 3-1 pitch from Bagwell. And that misses outside. It's ball four. Torres heads down to first base with the walk. And that will bring up William Mescala. The shortstop for the Valley League tonight. Escala digs into the right-handed batter's box. First pitch on the way from Bagwell. Grounder over towards third base. The field and the throw, and they get... Torres out at second to end the inning. So no runs on one hit, no errors, and two men left on in the top of the second for the Valley League. Middle of the Southern League order coming up when we come back. So at Sheets, we really exist to make people's lives easier every day. In this moment, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to connect with some of our lucky fans to help make their dreams come true. How are you? I'm Ryan Sheets. Here's a brand new truck for you, man. A once-in-a-lifetime dream vacation to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been anywhere. A check for $25,000. This is a testament to why everybody should be a Sheets for you.
Scotty Lee will lead off for the Southern League in the bottom of the second. In the first pitch, he skies it to left center field and going back and making the catch is Jackson Tate at the warning track and there's one out in the inning. Quick at bat for the extra hitter, Scotty Lee. And that takes us to Tyler McPeak, the catcher for the Southern League. McPeak from the Mooresville Spinners. First pitch right across the plate for a called strike. Nothing in one. Devin Hemingway still working on the mound for the Valley League in inning number two of this afternoon's game. The 0-1 pitch finds its way in the zone for a called strike. Nothing in two to McPeak. McPeak, a native of Denver, North Carolina. He plays his college ball at Campbell University in the state of North Carolina. A lot of these players on the Southern Collegiate League is the 1-2 pitch popped up right field, chasing after it, and it falls foul just short of the foul line. So it's a 1-2 count to McPeak. As I was saying, a lot of these players in the Southern Collegiate Baseball League, they come from the state of North Carolina, play their college ball in the state of North Carolina. It's a very localized league. As opposed to when we look at the Valley League, you have players from all over the country. A 1-2 pitch, a foul ball behind home plate. We have players from California, Florida, Pennsylvania, New York, Hawaii. Very different, the uh, makeups of these leagues. The 1-2 pitch misses low. The counting one's up at 2-2. Two and two. Hemingway comes set from the windup. The 2-2 pitch hit right back at him up the middle for a base hit. The first hit of the ball game for the Southern Collegiate League. And Tyler McPeak is aboard at first base. That'll bring up the first baseman, Seth McCauley. McCauley also of the Mooresville Spinners. Native of Huntersville, North Carolina. Settling into the right-handed batter's box and throwing over to first is Hemingway trying to pick off McPeak, but he slides back safely. The first pitch to McCauley lined into center field and going back is... Tate making the catch at the warning track. Another fly out to Jackson Tate as he covered a lot of ground on that one, going all the way to the warning track and making the catch over his shoulder for the second out of the inning. That brings up the right fielder, number 25, J.D. Funk. Funk representing the Carolina Vipers. First pitch on the way from Hemingway. Misses high and outside. A 1-0 count to Funk. On the year for the Vipers, he's batting 264 with seven home runs and 17 RBIs. A 1-0 pitch, misses low and outside. Two balls and no strikes. With this being a showcase style game, trying to get all the players some playing time. We'll see how long each pitcher lasts. Both teams already have pitchers warming up in the bullpen. This Funk now facing a 2-1 count. Two outs in the inning and a runner on first for the Southern League. Hemingway from the stretch kicks and delivers the 2-1 pitch. Misses outside. Three balls and a strike to the right fielder Funk out of Rochester, New Hampshire. So there's one player that's not from the North Carolina area. A native of Rochester, New Hampshire, plays his college ball at Tennessee Tech. A 3-1 pitch is fouled off into the net behind home plate, and the count goes full. Devin Hemingway working in the second inning on the mound, representing the Charlottesville Tom Sox for the Valley League.
This Funk will step out of the box and wait for Hemingway to climb back on to the top of the mound. And now he digs back in and awaits the 3-2 offering. Funk peering in and waiting for the sign. And Hemingway comes set pitch. Swing and a miss from J.D. Funk. And he goes down to end the inning. No runs on one hit. No errors. And one man left on base for the Southern Collegiate League in the bottom of the second. And we're going to head to the top of the third inning. It'll be Kobe Lopez, Aiden Nagel, and Francisco Thomas due up for the Valley Baseball League. We are scoreless as we head to the top of the third here at Coleman Field at the USA Baseball National Training Complex. A beautiful facility. And it looks like there is a new pitcher on the mound for the Southern League. So it's Trent Joyner on the mound for the Southern Collegiate League as we get ready for the top of the third inning, representing the Mooresville Spinners. Joyner pitching to his battery mate Tyler McPeak in the first pitch to Kobe Lopez, pop up in the center field, and the catch is made by Osar Rankin. So we go back to the top of the Valley League order. Aiden Nagel coming up to the plate. He's 0 for 1 tonight with a strikeout in the top of the first to lead off the game. First pitch to Nagel from Joyner. In there for a called strike. Nothing in one. The 0 1 pitch. Catches the outside corner, and it's 0-2 to Nagel. Joyner fires the 0-2 pitch, and that one misses low and outside. A 1-2 count to the left fielder from Woodstock. A swing and a miss, the 1-2 offering, and Nagel goes down with his second strikeout of the night. And the second out here in the third inning. And so now we're already making substitutions for the Valley League as Sonny Deshara comes up to the plate, replacing Francisco Thomas. The first pitch on the way from Joyner. And Deshara lines that one right over Joyner's head into center field for a base hit. So Thomas out of the lineup, and as I was trying to tell you in his first at-bat before he grounded out, he is on a heck of a streak for the Tom Sox right now. He has gotten a hit in 18 straight games for Charlottesville. That breaks 
their all-time hit streak record. He tied their record the other night, and then last night he broke the Tom Sox record with an 18-game hitting streak. But he's out of the game now as Sonny Deshara replaces him, and Deshara singled, and now Wes Clark at the plate, the catcher for the Valley League. He's 0 for 1 with the strikeout tonight, and he fouls off the first offering that he sees. Nothing in one. The 0-1 pitch misses low and outside. The count evens up at 1-1 one one to Clark, the catcher out of Waynesboro. And the 1-1 one one pitch stays low and outside. Two balls and a strike. Joiner from the Mooresville Spinners on the season. He's 3-0. and He also has one save. He's pitched 15 and a third innings, and he has an 0-58 ERA. The 2-1 pitch fouled off into the net behind home plate. The count evens up at 2-2. Two two. Joyner has struck out 23 batters in those 15 and a third innings. He's pitched in 10 games, all relief appearances. And he's picked up those three wins and that 0-58 ERA. He's peering in, awaiting the sign from McPeak. McPeak, the catcher from Mooresville. The 2-2 pitch misses outside, and the count goes full to Clark. So the battery right now, pitcher and catcher, both out of Mooresville. The first baseman as well, Seth McCauley. And the third baseman, a lot of Mooresville spinners on the field. The 3-2 pitch, runner goes, and it's fouled into the net. The count will stay at 3-2 to Clark. He's got Sonny Deshara over at first base. Deshara... Representing the Strasburg Express. As now Joyner comes set for the 3-2 offering. Fires it in there. Runner goes and it misses low and outside. Clark draws a walk. And that puts runners on first and second for the Valley League. With Andrew Check coming to the plate. And he's not a guy you want coming up. With very many runners on, he leads the Valley League with 40 RBIs on the season. The next closest player, the guy at second base, Sonny Deshara, he has 30. So Andrew Check has 10 more RBIs than the next closest batter. First pitch from Joyner misses low and outside. Clark, one of the biggest players in the league. Stands at six foot six inches tall. And now he hits the 1 0 pitch into left field, gets down for a base hit, and Deshara is going to be held up at third, and that puts runners on every base for the Valley League. With Dominic Baselli coming up to the plate. Baselli, the right fielder out of Covington. And as I was saying, Andrew Check, six foot six, 265 pounds. I'd say he's like the Valley League's version of Aaron Judge. And from up in the press box, I've seen him a couple times this year, and he looks big when he's at the plate. First pitch to Baselli misses outside, 1-0. But when you see him up close in person, he looks even bigger. We were getting lunch at Chick-fil-A on our way down from Harrisonburg this afternoon, and I was standing next to him in line, and he is a very big Baseball player, the 1-1 or 1-0 pitch swung on a miss, and it's a 1-1 count to Baselli. He's 0 for 1 tonight with the fly out to the shortstop. Joyner kicks and delivers the 1-1 pitch, hit over to second base, and he bobbles off the hop, and a run comes across as Deshara scores, makes it 1-0 Valley League here in the top of the third inning, and the bases are still loaded for the Valley. And I think they ruled that a hit. You could, I don't know, you could question if that was an error by the second baseman, R.J. Connor. But it's one nothing in favor of the Valley League as we play in the top of the third inning. Two outs, bases loaded for Jackson Tate. And he pops this one up from Joyner in his center field. 
coming in and making the catches. I'll start ranking, and that'll end the inning. The Valley League gets one run across on three hits. Make that two hits, one error. So there was an error, and three men left on base. They lead one nothing as we head to the bottom of the third. It'll be the bottom of the Southern League order coming up. If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steven Toyota, where every new Toyota car, truck, van, and SUV is smile priced now to save you more. And every certified used Toyota on the lot is also smile priced at Steven Toyota, where you get more for your trade, more credit options to help you get approved, and exceptional service after the sale, too. If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steven Toyota. We've got a new pitcher on the mound for the Valley League as we get ready to resume play in the bottom of the third inning. It's Michael Anderson for the Winchester Royals. He's 4-2 and two on the season with a 561 ERA and 31 strikeouts. He'll be taken over for Devin Hemingway, who went two scoreless innings in the first game of the Southeast College Prospect Showcase. The first pitch to Collins Robinson hit over in the right left field, diving for it and making the catch in left field is Aiden Nagel. A terrific diving catch by Nagel to save the base hit there. And now there's one down in the top of the third for Ben Wettenhall, the designated hitter for the Southern League. Wettenhall batting 340 on the year. He's got a home run and 16 RBIs. The first pitch. That one's hit hard right back at Anderson, and it bobbles off his glove. Now Lopez is going to run over and try to field it, but he can't get to it in time. And Wettenhall is safe at first base. That ball, a hard hit line drive right back at Anderson, and just deflected it off his glove over towards Lopez at second base. But he was at the back of the infield dirt and couldn't run up and field the ball in time. So Wetton Hall is safe at first base. And it looks like they ruled that in there. I don't know. I think that one could have been ruled a hit. First pitch now to Rankin. That one is skied into the center field, and the catch is made by Jackson Tate. So now there's two out in the inning as we go back to the top of the order. RJ Connor coming up for the Southern League. He led off. The game for the Southern League with a fly out to the shortstop. First pitch from Anderson. That one in there for a called strike. Nothing in one to Connor. He's got a runner on first in Ben Wettenhall. And the 0-1 pitch. That one's a grounder over towards short. The throw over to first to check. In time to end the inning. A 6-3 put out to end the inning. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left on base in the bottom of the third for the Southern League. Valley League leads 1-0 as we head to the top of the fourth. So at Sheets, we really exist to make people's lives easier every day. In this moment, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to connect with some of our lucky fans to help make their dreams come true. How are you? I'm Ryan Sheets. Here's a brand new truck for you, man. A once-in-a-lifetime dream vacation to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been anywhere. A check for $25,000. This is a testament to 
why everybody should be a sheets freak. Take me out to the ball game. Oh, wait, we're already here. Barry Lee and Katie G, hoping you're enjoying the old ball game and inviting you to join us each weekday morning from 5 to 10 a.m. on your 92.5 Wink FM. Trent Joyner still on the mound for the Southern League as we get ready to play in the top of the fourth inning. The Valley League coming up to the plate. It'll be Christian Torres leading off for the Valley League. He is 0 for 1 in the game. Actually, he hasn't, had, hasn't registered an official at bat. He drew a walk his first time up and then was thrown out on a fielder's choice to end the inning. First pitch popped up right field side. Chasing after it and diving for it, bouncing off his glove and now rounding first, heading for second. Torres safe at second base with a leadoff double here in the top of the fourth inning. The right fielder, J.D. Funk, just couldn't make the catch. And Christian Torres is on base for the second time tonight. And William Escala comes up to the plate. He grounded into a fielder's choice his last time up. Escala, in first pitch, grounder down the third base line, and the third baseman fielding it behind third base to throw across the field, not in time. And Escala runs it out, and he's got himself an infield single, puts runners on the corners for the Valley League with no outs in the inning. That will bring up the second baseman, Kobe Lopez. Lopez flew out to the center field his first time up. First pitch misses outside. 1-0 to Lopez. Lopez attending Florida International University. He's a native of Orlando, Florida. The 1-0 pitch stays upstairs, and it's 2-0. He appeared in 29 games this season for Florida International, made 11 starts. The 2-0 pitch fouled into the net behind home plate, and it's 2-1. And Digs back into the right-handed box. He's got some cool socks on. His left sock has red and white stripes, and his right sock is blue with white stars as William Escala steals second base, and the ball gets past the catcher, but he's... Would have been a stolen base whether or not the catcher had come up with the throw. I think he would have had it beat. So runners on second and third for the Valley League with no outs. And Lopez facing a 3-1 count at the plate. A 3-1 pitch popped up left field. Getting under it and making the catch is Collins Robinson. Coming home, tagging up from third is Christian Torres. And he's going to cross the plate without a throw. 2-0 Valley League in the top of the fourth. The sacrifice fly by Kobe Lopez for the first out of the inning. But it gets a run across, and we go back to the top of the Valley League order. And it looks like there's going to be some substitutions now. As number 12, Jed Bryant, replacing Aiden Nagel. Bryant from the Harrisonburg Turks. The first pitch on the way. Runner goes, and... Escala safe at third on the stolen base attempt. He's now stolen second and third in the inning. The 1-0 pitch to Bryant misses outside. And now it's 2-0. And and asked Bryant on the bus ride down here if he was excited for this opportunity. He said he's excited as he'll ever be. 2-0 pitch popped up left field. And getting under it, it falls in between the left fielder and the center fielder, and 
That's going to be a base hit for Bryant. Coming home to score is Escala. The RBI double for Jed Bryant. And that makes it 3 nothing in favor of the Valley League. The outfielders Robinson and Rankin just coming together and neither one of them caught it off and the ball just fell in between them. And allowed it to be a RBI double for Jed Bryant. And now there's going to be a mountain conference for the Southern League. And Sonny Deshara coming up to the plate. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to our Facebook live stream this afternoon. Sonny Deshara will dig into the right handed batter's box now with one out and a runner on second. The runner, Jed Bryant. Joiner comes set from the stretch. Looking back at Brian at second, keeping an eye on him, decides to pitch. The pitch to Deshara misses low and outside. 1 0. -oh. 1 0 -oh count to Deshara, who singled his last time up when he came up in the third inning, replacing Francisco Thomas. A 2-0 pitch now. And that one in there for a called strike. It's 2-1. and one. Joyner is peering in. Gets the sign from McPeak. Comes set. Kicks and delivers. A 2-1 pitch. Chop foul down the first baseline. And the count evens up at 2-2. Two and two. So a 2-2 count to the designated hitter, Deshara, from Strasburg. A pitch on the way. And that one stays inside, just inside. And the count will go full. By my count, the scoreboard still says 2-2. Two and two, But I believe it's a 3-2 count to Deshara. One out in the inning and a runner on second. A 2-2 pitch on the way. That one chopper down the third baseline. It's going to be fielded. The throw over to first and they get to Shara out on the ground out and now there's two down in the inning and Wes Clark coming up to the plate with a runner on second Valley League leads 3-0 in the top of the fourth inning game one of this Southern Collegiate Baseball Showcase First pitch on the way to Clark. That one in there for a called strike. Nothing in one. Clark is one for or 0 for 1 tonight. He struck out and he has also reached on a walk. Made it all the way to third base in the last inning, but just couldn't come home to score. Yo one pitch. Pop foul into the net. And it's nothing in two. Clark, the big power hitting catcher out of Waynesboro. Plenty of Waynesboro players on this team. They've got four players on the showcase team. Second most in the league. Harrisonburg has six. The 0-2 pitch misses low. The count moves to 1-2. and two. Of course, Waynesboro's coach, Zach Cole, is the manager of this team as the 1-2 pitch grounder over to second base and the throw to McCauley at third. And that'll do it for the fourth inning, a 4-3 ground out. But not before the Valley League gets a couple of runs across and they lead 3-0 as we head to the bottom of the fourth.
If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steve and Toyota, where every new Toyota car, truck, van, and SUV is smile price now to save you more. And every certified used Toyota on the lot is also smile priced at Steve and Toyota, where you get more for your trade, more credit options to help you get approved, and exceptional service after the sale, too. If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steve and Toyota. off in the bottom of the fourth inning for the Southern Collegiate Baseball League is Drew Inesta. He comes up to the plate facing Michael Anderson from Winchester. The first pitch misses low and outside. A 1-0 count to Inesta who's 0 for 1 on the night with a strikeout in the first inning. The 0-1 pitch popped up into right field and getting under it making the catch is Dominic Baselli. And there's one down in the inning. That'll bring up the shortstop, number 10, Mark Engel. And while he was coming up to the plate, they made the announcement that now catching for the Valley League is number 29, Nick Tony, out of Strasburg. The first pitch to Engel in there for a called strike. Nothing in one. Engel is 0 for 1 tonight with the ground out in his first at bat. Now the 0 1 pitch is fouled off behind home plate, and it's an 0 2 count to Engel. Engel playing for the Piedmont Pride in South Carolina, the one team in the Southern Collegiate League to play in South Carolina. He's from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. The 0-2 pitch is fouled off behind home plate, and the count will stay at 0-2. However, he played his he plays at Middle Tennessee State right now his, for his college ball, but he played his freshman year at Radford. The 0-2 pitch. And that one misses way outside, and the count moves to 1-2. and two. When he was in high school, he was ranked as the 7th best shortstop in the state of Pennsylvania. Anderson with the 1-2 pitch, popped up, foul down the left field line, and the count will stay at 1-2. and two. Waiting on deck, deck is his Piedmont teammate. That would be Scotty Lee, the extra hitter. Interesting lineup for the Southern Collegiate League. They have an extra hitter and the designated hitter in the lineup. A 1-2 pitch from Anderson. That one just outside, and the count evens up at two balls and two strikes to Lee. A 2-2 pitch. That one's outside, and it's a full count. Three and two. One out and nobody on. Anderson working in his second inning. The 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. And Engel goes down for the second out of the inning. And that will bring up his teammate, the extra hitter, Scotty Lee, who is 0 for 1 tonight with a fly out to center field. Lee digging into the right-handed batter's box to face Anderson for the first time tonight. First pitch misses just outside. 1 0 count to start off the at bat for Lee. Didn't get to tell you much about Scotty Lee his first time up because he flew out on the first pitch that he saw as the 1 0 pitch misses inside. Two balls and no strikes. But he plays for the Piedmont Pride and he attends Mars Hill where he will be a sophomore in the fall. He's a native of Belmont, North Carolina. And he had a pretty good season this past year at Mars Hill. He batted 281 with 8 home runs and 31 RBIs. As the 2 1 pitch is in there for a called strike, and the count evens up at 2 2. Anderson fires a 2 2 pitch, a swing and a miss at 1 out of the zone. It gets past Tony, but he throws over to check at first, and that'll do it for the fourth inning. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the inning for Anderson, and the Valley League still leads 3-0 as we head to the top of the fifth.
take me out to the ball game. Oh, wait, we're already here. Barry Lee and Katie G, hoping you're enjoying the old ball game and inviting you to join us each weekday morning from 5 to 10 a.m. on your 92.5 Wink FM. We're getting ready for the top of the fifth inning here in the Southeast Collegiate Baseball Prospect Showcase. The Valley League taking on the Southern Collegiate Baseball League in the first game of the week. And coming up to the plate to lead things off for the Valley League is going to be Andrew Check, the first baseman out of Stanton, and a new pitcher on the mound for the Southern Collegiate League. Check strolling up to the plate and he will face Dawson Gauze of the Piedmont Pride. Number 24, Dawson Gauze taking the mound in the top of the fifth inning. The Valley League leads 3-0. They've got one run in the third and two more in the fourth. The first pitch from Gauze in their first called strike. It's 0-1 to check. A swing and a miss at the 0-1 pitch, and it's nothing in two. Check. One for two on the night with a single and a fly out. It'll be check, Baselli, and Jackson Tate leading off for the Valley League. The 0-2 pitch. Misses outside, and it's a 1-2 count to the power-hitting first baseman out of Stanton. Check attends Walsh University. It's where he plays his college ball. A 1-2 pitch. Misses low and outside, and the count evens up at two balls and two strikes to the 6'6 six six first baseman. Leading the league in RBIs with 40 on the year and tied for the lead with eight home runs. Facing a full count now after the 2-2 pitch misses the zone. It's a 3-2 count. As Gauze gets the sign and comes set. The pitch on the way. And that one popped up into the left field side. The third baseman chasing after it. And he makes the catch right at the fence. Running into the fence after he makes the catch. It's Drew Inesta. Making the catch in foul territory for the first out of the inning. Brings up the right fielder, Dominic Boselli. He is one for two tonight as well with a single and a fly out to the shortstop. First pitch to Boselli. He grounds it over to the shortstop and the throw to McCauley at first. And quickly now there's two down in the inning. Jackson Tate comes up to the plate now with two outs and nobody on for the Valley League as they lead 3-0 in the top of the fifth inning. Digs into the left-handed batter's box awaiting the pitch from Gauze. From the windup, the pitch on the way and that one's inside and I think it hit Tate. He turned it away to avoid getting hit but it just caught a piece of him and he'll head down to first base. Runner on first for the Valley League with two outs in the inning. And Christian Torres coming up to the plate. He is one for one tonight with a double and a run scored. He also reached on a walk earlier in the game. He comes up now with a man on first. And Gauz now working from the stretch. First pitch on the way. Misses outside. 1-0 and to Torres. Gauz on the mound. Pitches at Tusculum College. I believe it's Tusculum University now. The runner goes on the 1-0 pitch and throw down to second. Not in time. As Tate is in there with a stolen base. Seagal is pitching at Tusculum University in Tennessee. He's a native of Belmont, North Carolina. Majoring in physical therapy. He says he plans to either play in Major League Baseball or be a physical therapist. 
2-0 pitch. Just misses the zone, and it's 3-0 to Torres. His hobbies include fishing. His favorite movie is The Avengers. A 3-0 pitch, misses the line outside, and Torres draws a walk. Runners on first and second for the Valley League. That'll bring up the shortstop, Willie Mascala. He's one for two tonight. He grounded into a fielder's choice his first time up. Then in the fourth inning, he singled, stole two bases, and came home to score a run. First pitch from Gauze misses inside, 1-0. and He's got runners on first and second now in the top of the fifth. With two outs, a 3-0 lead for the Valley League. The 1-0 pitch misses low and outside. Two balls and no strikes to Escala. Reminder that the Valley League will be back in action tomorrow morning when they play the Florida League in a 9.30 a.m. matchup. The 2-0 pitch misses inside and it's 3-0 to Escala. The 3-0 pitch popped up sky high. Coming over is Inesta from third base, and he'll make the catch in foul territory to end the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and two men left on base for the Valley League in the top of the fifth. They lead 3-0 as we head to the bottom of the fifth. McPeak, McAuley, and Funk do up for the Southern League. Is it working? We're getting ready. We're getting ready for the bottom of the fifth inning here at Coleman Field. The Southern Collegiate League coming up to the plate. It'll be Tyler McPeak leading off. It'll be followed by Seth McAuley and JD Funk. And a new pitcher on the mound. We'll get to that in a second as the first pitch is rocketed to right field and the catch is made at the warning track. One out in the inning. The new pitcher on the mound for the Valley League is number 25, Will Bryan. A left-handed pitcher out of Harrisonburg. He's a sophomore at Eastern Kentucky University. One of the six Turks players on this Valley League squad. As Seth McAuley digs into the box for his second at-bat of the evening. The first pitch in there for a called strike. Nothing in one. McAuley is 0 for 1 tonight. He flew out to center field his first time up. The first pitch, or the 0 1 pitch, swing and a miss, and it's nothing in two to McAuley, the third baseman from the Mooresville Spinners. Brian working quickly, the 0 2 pitch on the way. That one misses the on outside, a 1 2 count. Brian, a native of Brandenburg, Kentucky. The 0 2 pitch. 
This is inside. A swing and a miss, and the catcher drops it. Taken off for first is McCauley, but the throw down to check. And they'll get him out. So two down in the inning for Will Bryan as J.D. Funk comes up to the plate. Funk is 0 for 1 tonight with a strikeout in the second inning. He comes up with nobody on and two outs. A 3-0 lead for the Valley League in the bottom of the fifth. First pitch on the way to Funk and a big swing and a miss. He wanted all of that one. It's 0-1. Funk representing the Carolina Vipers. The 0-1 pitch, another swing and a miss. And Brian's got him down in the count, 0-2. The 0-2 pitch, Brian fires it in there. It misses low. A 1-2 count now to Funk, the right fielder. Yeah. Chop foul is the 1-2 offering, and the count will stay at 1-2. Funk playing at Tennessee Tech for his college ball. He batted 245 with six home runs and 27 RBIs there this past year. He's majoring in pre-athletic training, and he was named to the athletic director's honor roll this year. He'll be a sophomore at Tennessee Tech in the fall. A one-two pitch on the way from Brian, and the breaking ball in the zone for a called strike three. Funk goes down looking to end the inning. A one-two-three inning for Brian as he comes in in the bottom of the fifth, and we head to the sixth. The Valley League leads it three-nothing. We're getting ready for the top of the sixth inning. Here at Coleman Field, Kobe Lopez will lead it off for the Valley League. Digging into the right-handed batter's box as he faces Dawson Gauze. And first pitch misses the zone, 1-0. Gauze on the mound in his second inning of work. The 1-0 pitch fouled off, and it's 1-1. One one. Lopez is 0 for 2 tonight with two flyouts. Facing a 2-1 count now for Gauze. Gauze hit a batter and walked a batter in the last inning, but neither of them were able to come home to score. The 2-1 pitch hit hard down the third base line, but it rolls foul. And the count moves to two and two. Valley League leading three nothing against the Southern Collegiate League. The two two pitch, a grounder over to third base. It's fielded off the hop and the throw across the field to first in time for the out. And there's one down.
new fielders in the game for the Southern League. So we'll try to keep you updated on that as we can. Over at third base, it's, I believe it's Will Stallings. As Jed Bryant at the plate now. We go back to the top of the Valley League order. Fouls off the 1-0 pitch and the count moves to a 1-1. One one. One, one pitch, a grounder over to second base. And the throw over to first. And Bryant is retired. It looks like it's Gilbert at first base now for the Southern Collegiate League. Two down in the inning after the ground out for Bryant. Francisco. And now Thomas Francisco is coming up to the plate again. First pitch, pop foul, third base side, and it's 0-1. Francisco had one at bat. He grounded out in the top of the first. Then he was replaced by Sonny Deshara. And now he's coming back into the lineup. The designated hitter in the two spot. The 0-1 pitch misses low. One and one. And it's starting to rain, it looks like, here in Cary. A light shower falling as we play in the top of the sixth inning. Fans are clearing out, getting up under where there's cover. An 0-2 count to Thomas. Thomas Francisco at the plate. That one's hit hard down the right field line. That gets past the first baseman for a base hit. Rolling into the corner. Rounding first. Heading for second is Francisco. Now rounding second is the right fielder. Can't pick it up. Heading into third with a stand-up triple. With two outs in the six is Thomas Francisco. He keeps the inning going for the Valley League with a hard hit ball down the right field line. A two out triple for Francisco. Comes back into the lineup at the DH spot. And now there's a runner on third for the Valley League and Nick Tony at the plate making his first at bat of the night replacing Wes Clark in the lineup. First pitch to Tony. That one pop up into shallow center field and the second baseman leaps up and makes the grab. And that'll do it for the sixth inning. One hit, but they can't get him home and they leave a runner on base in the top of the sixth. We head to the home half of the inning, bottom of the southern order due up. If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steve and Toyota, where every new Toyota car, truck, van, and SUV is smile price now to save you more. And every certified used Toyota on the lot is also smile priced at Steve and Toyota, where you get more for your trade, more credit options to help you get approved, and exceptional service after the sale, too. If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steve and Toyota.
and we're getting ready for the bottom of the sixth inning as the Southern Collegiate League comes up to the plate. And leading off, placing Collins Robinson will be Jack Hennessy of the Carolina Vipers. The first pitch on the way from Brian, a swing and a miss. Nothing in one to Hennessy. Brian made quick work in his first inning. A three up, three down inning with two strikeouts. And now the 0 1 pitch catches the outside corner of the plate, and it's 0 2 to Hennessy. Brian with the 0-2 pitch, a grounder over to the second baseman, Lopez. Fields it, makes the throw to first for the first out of the inning. One down and nobody on. And there will be a new batter replacing Ben Wettenhall. First pitch, a swing and a miss to Chase Zorowski. Nothing in one. Zorowski of the Lake Norman Copperheads. The 0-1 pitch misses outside. One and one is the count. Zorowski grounds the 1-1 pitch over to third base. Fielding it off the hop in the throw. Too far off the bag for the first baseman. And now Zorowski is safe at first. I'd rule that a throwing error on the third baseman. So that puts a runner on first for Asar Rankin. The center fielder staying in the lineup. By the way, at first base right now for the Valley League is Josh Madol of the Harrisonburg Turks. First pitch to Rankin into the gap in left center field. That's going to roll back all the way to the warning track. Rounding second, heading for third is Zorowski, and he will be held up at third. A double for Osar Rankin puts runners at second and third for the Southern League with just one out in the inning. And now we go back to the top of the order and R.J. Connor coming up to the plate. Connor of the Carolina Vipers. Actually, it'll be Ryan Healy at the plate for the Southern League. Also number 16, R.J. Connor was in the leadoff spot to begin the game wearing number 16 and now Ryan Healy also number 16 takes the first pitch from Brian for a called strike Healy of the Carolina Vipers native of Waxhaw North Carolina plays at Catawba Valley Community College the 0-1 pitch misses low the counting ends up at 1-1 one and one. The 1-1 pitch from Brian. That one misses low and inside. Two balls and a strike to Healy. Runner is on second and third. One out in the inning. A 3-0 ball game as Brian comes set, kicks in, delivers. And that one misses low. And now it's a 3-1 count to Healy. The sophomore at Catawba Valley. We batted 298 with eight RBIs there this year. A 3-1 pitch from Brian, a swing and a miss, and the count goes full. He's got Zorowski at third and Rankin at second. One out in the inning. A 3-2 pitch from Brian, a swing and a miss, and he sets him down for the second out. And now coming up to the plate. Is 
a number 24. There are three number 24s listed on the roster. This is Will Stallings. At the plate for the Southern League. Two outs and runners on second and third for Stallings as he faces Will Bryan. Pitch on the way. That one's in there for a called strike. A 2-1 count. As Bryan comes up from the windup, the 2-1 pitch pop foul over the press box and the count will even up at 2-2. Two and two. A swing and a miss, and he sets him down for the third out of the inning. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Brian. He's got four through two innings. No runs on one hit, one error, and two men left on in the bottom of the sixth. We head to the seventh. The Valley League leads 3-0. So at Sheets, we really exist to make people's lives easier every day. In this moment, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to connect with some of our lucky fans to help make their dreams come true. How are you, I'm Ryan Sheets. Here's a brand new truck for you, man. A once in a lifetime <laughs> dream vacation to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been anywhere. <laughs> a check for $25,000. This is a testament to why everybody should be a Sheets free. If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steve and Toyota. Every new Toyota car, truck, van, and SUV is smile priced now to save you more. And every certified used Toyota on the lot is also smile priced at Steve and Toyota, where you get more for your trade, more credit options to help you get approved, and exceptional service after the sale, too. If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steve and Toyota. We're getting ready for the top of the seventh inning. Valley League coming to the plate, facing a new pitcher. It'll be Reese Robinson on the mound for the Southern League. As we get ready to play in the top of the seventh, the Valley League leads 3-0. Robinson taking the mound. He is presenting the Concord Athletics. Make that the Mooresville Spinners. Reese Robinson of the Mooresville Spinners, native of Dayton, Ohio, attending Wake Forest. He'll be a junior there this year. And he may be the tallest player in this game. He's six foot eight, weighs 235 pounds. The right-handed pitcher takes the mound in the top of the seventh. And Josh Madol will lead off for the Valley League. Madol getting his first at-bat of the night. He replaces Andrew Check at first base. The first pitch on the way. That one misses low, 1 0. The 1 0 pitch, that one finds the zone, and the count evens up at 1 and 1. And even count to Madol who's been having a fantastic season for the Turks. He's batting 358 on the year with a home run and 17 RBIs. He's walked 21 times. 2-1 pitch stays low and it's a 3-1 count to Madol as he leads off the top of the seventh. He's a native of Hampstead, North Carolina Sends UNC Greensboro. And the 3-1 pitch. 
called strike. He thought about going with the check swing, pulled back, but it's a called strike. And the count goes full to Madol leading off the top of the seventh. Facing Reese Robinson on the mound, the tall left right hander, six foot eight. Tallest player in the game. The three two pitch. And that one misses low and Madol draws a leadoff walk for the Valley League. That brings up Dominic Baselli with nobody out and a runner on first. Baselli of the Covington Lumberjacks. First pitch on the way from Robinson. And that one misses the zone. A 1 0 count. Baselli is one for three tonight. He's flown out, grounded out, and reached on a single. A 1 0 pitch in there for a call strike, and the count evens up at 1 and 1. The rain has stopped, the sun is back out, and it's a beautiful night, beautiful evening in Cary. A bit hot. The 1-1 one -one pitch hit hard to left field. Going back over the wall, a home run for Dominic Baselli. A hard hit ball over the left field wall, and Baselli drives in two runs as Josh Madol comes around to score on the two-run homer to make it 5 nothing in favor of the Valley League in the top of the seventh. Well, Baselli has three home runs on the year for the Valley League for Covington. And he hits one out of the park here. One of the hill past the left field fence. And now Jackson Tate at the plate. Still no outs in the inning. A 5-0 lead for the Valley League. The 1-0 pitch. Pop foul over the press box and the count evens up at one and one. Tate this afternoon has gone one for two also reached after getting hit by a pitch in the fifth inning. He reached on a triple in the second inning that was the first hit of the game. He's facing a 2-1 count from Robinson Pitch on the way and a swing and a miss, and the count evens up at two and two. Christian Torres is waiting on deck for the Valley League. A two two count. Robinson comes set from the stretch, kicks and delivers. Now misses low and away, and the count goes full to Tate. Robinson in his first inning of work. He walked the first batter that he faced and gave up a home run. And now another hard hit ball and a 3-2 count. Left field going back, bouncing over the wall. A ground rule double for Jackson Tate. Probably not the way you want to start off the inning if you're Reese Robinson. You give up a walk, a home run, and a ground rule double. So a runner on second for Christian Torres at the plate. And no outs in the inning as the Valley League bats in the top of the seventh. They lead five to nothing. Torres reached on a walk, then doubled and came home to score, and then reached on a walk again. So he's been on base every time he's been up to the plate tonight. First pitch on the way from Robinson, a swing and a miss. Torres won it all of that one, and it's 0-1. towards the third baseman for the Lumberjacks. Native of Miami, Florida, he graduated as the top student athlete in his class at Miami Senior High. His high school won back-to-back -back district championships. During his time there, the 0-1 pitch misses inside, gets away from the catcher, taking off for third is Tate, and he will be there safely on the pass ball.
So a 2-1 count now to Torres. The pitch on the way, and that one is smacked into center field. Going back is Rankin, and he will make the catch. Tagging up and coming home to score is Tate. The throw is not going to be there. And another run across the plate for the Valley League. Make it 6 to nothing in the top of the 7th. That was the first out of the inning. Christian Torres flying out to center field. And now there's nobody on and one out. And a new batter at the plate replacing William Escala. It's Mason Przoski. pitch in there for a called strike and the count evens up at 1-1 one one to Przoski the senior out of Louisiana Monroe he's a native of Bennington Nebraska takes the cut the 1-1 one one offering and it's 1-2 and two. Przoski from the Winchester Royals batting 300 this season 1-2 pitch, misses high and inside, brushes him off the plate a little bit. The count evens up at 2-2. Two and two. He replaces William Escala in the lineup. Two-two 2 pitch, a swing and a miss, and he goes down for the second out of the inning. And another substitution as Andrew Kaziski comes up now for the Valley League, replacing Kobe Lopez. So Lopez finishes the night without reaching base, but he did have a sacrifice fly. And now Kaziski at the plate. First pitch misses the zone, a 1 0 count to the second baseman from Purcellville. 1-0 pitch on the way, and that one is hit hard in the right field. It gets past the second baseman, and that's a base hit for Kasiski. Keep the inning going for the Valley League. And we'll go back to the top of the order as Aiden Nagel comes back into the lineup. And he'll come up with two outs and a runner on first. Nagel was the leadoff hitter, struck out twice, and then was replaced by Jed Bryant. Now he comes back into the lineup in the top of the seventh. Facing a 1-0 count from Robinson. The pitch on the way, and it misses outside. Two balls and no strikes to the left fielder out of Woodstock. Nagel has been one of the top players in the Valley League this season. As he's batting 419, which is good for third in the league. And he's tied for the lead in home runs with eight. The 3 0 pitch. Misses below his knees, and he draws a four pitch walk to put runners on first and second. For Thomas Francisco. The designated hitter, number 11, Thomas Francisco. And now a mound conference for the Southern League. Reese Robinson coming into the game in the top of the seventh, and not a great start. The first three batters all reached base and scored. He got the next two out, then he gave up a single and a walk with two outs and now he faces a guy who has an 18 game hitting streak back home in Charlottesville so probably not the inning that Robinson had envisioned when they 
Gave him the call. Come out to the mound. The first pitch on the way to Francisco. That one is popped up. Right field. And the right fielder will get under it and make the grab to end the inning. Three runs across for the Valley League. In the top of the seventh, they increase their lead to 6 nothing as we head to the bottom of the seventh. So at Sheets, we really exist to make people's lives easier every day. In this moment, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to connect with some of our lucky fans to help make their dreams come true. How are you? I'm Ryan Sheets. Here's a brand new truck for you, man. A once-in-a-lifetime dream vacation to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been anywhere. <laughs> a check for $25,000. This is a testament to why everybody should be a Sheets for you. Getting ready for the bottom of the seventh inning coming up here at Coleman Field on the USA Baseball National Training Complex. A new pitcher in the game for the Valley League as we continue our play in the 2019 Southeast Collegiate Prospect Showcase. The new pitcher is number 21, Alex Hopp from the Harrisonburg Turks. And the first batter that he'll face, not having a number on the back of his jersey, so I apologize, but not sure who this batter is. But he's facing a 1-1 count from Hop now. Back-to-back -back Turks pitchers for the Valley League. The former pitcher, Will Bryan, had a couple of good innings as the 1-1 one -one pitch is grounded over to second, the throw to first, and they get the out. Will Bryan had two solid innings with four strikeouts. Now Alex Hopp on the mound, and Scotty Lee comes up to the plate for the Southern League. Lee is 0-2 for two tonight with a flyout and a strikeout. He digs into the right-handed batter's box with one out, nobody on. The first pitch catches the outside corner, and it's nothing in one to Lee, the extra hitter for the Southern League tonight. The 0-1 pitch on the way, a swing and a miss, and it's 0-2. Lee facing an 0-2 count with two outs as he steps out of the box and readjusts his batting gloves, and now he'll dig back in. Get ready for the 0-2 pitch. It's fired in there. A swing and a miss. And he goes down for the second out of the inning. Following the conclusion of this game, the Cal Ripken League and the Sunbelt League will play at 735 right here in the stadium. And then we resume all the action tomorrow morning at 930 as the Valley League plays the second game of their week against the Florida League. At the plate now, facing Alex Hopp, is number nine. Jordan Harley from the Carolina Vipers. Pitch on the way, and that one, the ground ball hit over to the shortstop. He'll come up, make the throw to Madol at first, and that'll retire the side. A three up, three down inning. In the bottom of the seventh, and we head to the eighth. The Valley League leading 6 0.
So at Sheets, we really exist to make people's lives easier every day. In this moment, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to connect with some of our lucky fans to help make their dreams come true. How are you, I'm Ryan Sheets. Here's a brand new truck for you, man. A once in a lifetime dream vacation to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been anywhere. <laughs> a check for $25,000. This is a testament to why everybody should be a Sheets for you. Bottom of the seventh inning coming up is the Southern Collegiate League. Or make that the top of the eighth inning coming up. The scoreboard has not updated yet, but we're going to the top of the eighth. Southern Collegiate League in the field in the Valley League coming up to the plate. It'll be Nick Tony leading it off for the Valley League. And the catcher. Out of Strasburg, attending Florida Atlantic University. He digs into the right-handed batter's box to lead things off in the eighth. First pitch on the way, misses inside. 1-0 count. And I believe there's a new pitcher on the mound for the... Southern Collegiate League. Looks to be Nash Jamison of the Mooresville Spinners. Jamison a junior at Florence Darlington Tech. He's a native of Mount Holly, North Carolina. Pitch on the way to Tony. Misses upstairs and he'll draw a walk to lead off here in the top of the eighth inning. So Tony over at first. That brings up Josh Madol, who led off the last inning with a walk. And came around to score in the inning. He began that three-run rally for the Valley League. They lead six to nothing now in the top of the eighth. The first pitch on the way to Madol misses high, one and zero. Madol playing first base for the Valley League. He replaced Stanton's Andrew Check, who started the game at first base. The one-zero pitch on the way, a swing and a miss, and the count evens up at one and one. Jamison comes set from the stretch, looking over at first, decides to pitch. The 1-1 pitch fouled into the net behind home plate. The count moves to one ball and two strikes to Madol. Fun fact about Josh Madol, he plays baseball left-handed, but does everything else in his life right-handed. As he awaits the 1-2 pitch from Jamison and hits it over towards the first baseman in the third to second for one. Back to first base for the double play and they don't get it. Umpire says safe. Madol runs it out. But they do get the out at second for one. So one out and a runner on first for Dominic Baselli. And it looks like Nick Tony was injured as he was sliding into second base. He's being helped back to the dugout by the coaches, and he's hopping on one leg. So 
So don't know exactly what happened, but hopefully it's nothing serious and we'll wish him a speedy recovery with whatever injury he's dealing with there. Dominic Baselli at the plate for the Valley League. He hit a home run his last time up. A two-run homer that scored Josh Madol, who was at first base at the time, as the rain starts to come down again. A little harder this time. 1-0 pitch. Misses high, and it's two balls and no strikes to Baselli. Baselli, one of the few players who has not been subbed out this game. He's been in the lineup the entire time. It's raining a little bit here, but there's still sunny spots in the sky. It's some weird weather in Cary this afternoon. A 3-0 pitch. Misses upstairs, and Baselli draws a walk. Madola advances to second. Runners on first and second with one out for the Valley League. Jackson Tate will come up to the plate now. It's Baselli, Tate, and Torres are the three players for the Valley League that have not been subbed out at all this game. So Tate at the plate now. The first pitch on the way from Jameson. In there for a called strike. And it's nothing in one to Tate. We play in the top of the eighth inning. Valley League has a 6 nothing lead. The pitch to Tate hits him in the back as he turned around trying to avoid it, but it hit him. And that'll load the bases. That's the second time he's been hit by a pitch this evening. So Christian Torres is going to dig into the left-handed batter's box now with one out and the bases loaded for the Valley League. First pitch misses the zone. The last two pitchers for the Southern Collegiate League have struggled in their first inning. Reese Robinson came in, gave up a home run, and three runs in the inning. Now Nash Jameson coming in, he's got the bases loaded with just one out. But he blows the pitch past Torres there as he takes a big swing and a miss. And the count evens up at one and one. One one pitch hit hard over to the third baseman who catches it out of the air and tags third base as Madol did not tag up on the line drive and the double play will end the inning. So the tur or the uh, Valley League leaves the bases loaded in the top of the eighth, but they lead six nothing as we head to the bottom of the inning. Alex Hopp is back on the mound in the bottom of the eighth inning. As the Southern League comes up to the plate.
trailing 6-0. The Valley League has a sizable lead. As the first pitch, the batter loses his bat, throws it down the third baseline. It's Jordan Gilbert of the Concord Athletics. And first pitch, he just loses grip on his bat. Goes flying down the third baseline and the count's 0 and 1. Can hear the rain falling here at Coleman Field. So an 0 1 count for Jordan Gilbert. as we play here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Game one of the 2019 Southeast College Prospect Showcase. The 0-1 pitch in there for a called strike. It's nothing in two to Gilbert. The 0-2 pitch. That one just misses the zone. A 1-2 count now. One two pitch, can't get in the zone, and the count evens up at two balls and two strikes. Alex Hop on the mound. A two two pitch on the way, and that one misses low and outside. And the count goes full. Hop through a three up, three down inning in the bottom of the seventh. Now 3-2 pitch, misses high and outside, and he walks Gilbert to lead off the eighth. That'll bring up number 18, Brandon Lyman of the Piedmont Pride. Lyman comes into the game with no outs and a runner on first. First pitch misses high. 1-0 count. Hop working from the stretch, peering in, awaiting the sign. And fires the pitch in there. And that one misses the zone. Two balls and no strikes. Lyman stands at six foot one, 195 pounds. He played at Pasco Hernandez State College in Florida for the past two seasons. Now transferring to West Alabama. The 2-0 pitch hits him on the inside. Looks like almost near his ribs. He turned away from it for the most part, but it still got him. And so he heads down to first, and that puts runners on first and second for the Southern League. Now there's going to be a mound conference. Looks like assistant coach Brock Moss from the Strasburg Express is going to go out and have a chat with Alex Hopp and the catcher Wes Clark, who has come back into the game, replacing Nick Tony. Six nothing is our score. The Valley League with the lead in the bottom of the eighth inning. Playing against the Southern Collegiate Baseball League. First game of this week's showcase. Every league will play two games this week. be plenty of games tomorrow starting at 9.30 a.m. All the way throughout the day. 
And another game here tonight after this one gets wrapped up as the Ripken and Sunbelt Leagues will play at 735. The 0-1 pitch to Hennessy misses inside. And the count evens up at 1-1. One one. Hennessy is 0-1. for 1. He grounded out to second base his last time up. One one pitch is fouled off behind home plate, and the count moves to one and two. Gilbert at second, Lyman at first for the Southern League. No outs in the inning and a one two count to Hennessy. The pitch on the way from Hop. The chopper over to the pitcher's mound, Hennessy comes off, and he can't make the throw anywhere. Looking all around, trying to figure out which was the best base to throw to, and he didn't have time to throw any of them. So bases loaded for the Southern League, and no outs. After the infield single from Hennessy, and it's Chase Zorowski at the plate now. Top steps off the mound for a second. Now he gets ready. Ready for the first offering to Zorowski. The pitch on the way. Misses high. 1 0. The 1 0 pitch. Hop fires in there. A swing and a miss from Zorowski. And the count evens up at 1-1. One one. Base is loaded. Gilbert at third, Lyman at second, and Hennessy at first. No outs yet in the inning. Hop from the windup. Kicks and delivers, and that one's fouled into the net behind home plate. A 1-2 and two count now to Zorowski. Zorowski places college ball at Shippensburg University. He's a native of Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania. 1-2 pitch. In there for a called strike three. He goes down looking and that's the first down of the inning. That'll bring up the center fielder, Alsar Rankin. Rankin is one for two tonight with a fly out and a double. Digs into the right-handed batter's box with one out. Bases loaded. Pitch on the way. A big swing and a miss as he reached for that one up out of the zone. And it's 0-1. He put all he had into that one as he took a cut at it. And now it's 0-1. The pitch on the way from Hop. That one misses high and inside. The count evens up at 1-1. The 1-1 pitch from Hop. That one is hit foul down the right field line, and it goes way out at the ballpark. And the count moves to 1-2 and two now on Rankin. Just one out in the inning, and base is loaded. But a 1-2 count to Osar Rankin. As Hop gets the sign from Clark, looking back over at third base, decides to pitch. The 1-2 pitch. Hit hard over to the second baseman. He'll field it, make the throw to second for one, to first for the double play. And the first, Osar Rankin is safe at first. They couldn't get the play there in time, but they get one at second. And a run does come across to score for the Southern League as Gilbert came home from third. So back to the top of the order. Ryan Healy at the plate for the Southern League. And Hop working from the stretch again now with runners on the corners. First pitch misses outside. It's Lyman at third and Rankin at first. The 
1-0 pitch misses low. Two balls and no strikes to Healy. Two outs in the inning. 2-0 pitch. Runner goes. Coming up and throwing is Clark. The throw down to second. And they don't get him. And now coming home to score is Lyman. And it's 6-2. The Southern League gets two runs across in the bottom of the eighth. And there's still just two outs in the inning. And they've got a runner in scoring position. So I saw Rankin up at second base now. And two balls and no strikes on Ryan Healy. But that one catches the outside corner. It's two and one. Hop comes set. Kicks and delivers a two one pitch. Misses low. And Healy's taken off for first. That must have been ball four. I only had it as ball three. The scoreboard only had it as ball three. But the umpire agrees it's ball four. So Healy at first now after the walk. And it looks like they're going to come out and take Alex Hop out of the game. Will Stallings will await in the on deck circle. And we'll see who the new pitcher is for the Valley League. We're going to take a break when we come back. We'll have all the details on the Valley League's new pitcher as they lead 6-2 to two in the bottom of the eighth. Hey, baseball fans. Graham Knight here with the Valley Baseball League, and I want to take a second to introduce you to a close personal friend of mine, Grace Burroughs. She's a New York Times bestselling author, but she's also a close personal friend of yours, even though you may not know it. In fact, without Grace's help, we would not have been able to bring you the playoffs and championships last year. Thanks to her, we were able to cover every single game. And thanks to her, this year we had all the gear we need to support 11 different sites throughout the Shenandoah Valley. Take a second and look at her latest book, When a Duchess Says I Do. Grace Burroughs, she believes in love and baseball. If you can't find romance on the baseball diamond, take a look at graceburrows.com backslash bookshelf. And if you've already got the love of your life, good for you. Drop Grace a line and let her know that you really appreciate her help with these live streams. It would mean a lot to her. Now back to the action. Cole McNamee, the new pitcher for the Valley League as we get back to the action in the bottom of the eighth inning. McNamee coming into the game. There's a little bit of confusion as he's listed as number 24 on the roster, but wearing number 30 in the game. Now pitching for the Valley, number 30, Cole McNamee. So he's on the mound. He'll face Will Stallings at the plate. And runners on first and second for the Southern League. Two outs in the inning. McNamee with the first pitch misses low and inside. 1-0. McNamee's played for two Valley League teams so far this season. He started the season with the Charlottesville Tom Sox. And now has found himself on the Harrisonburg Turks after a trade. And he hits Will Stallings, and now he'll head down to first, and bases loaded again. 
for the Southern League. Now base is loaded and two outs and in a first pitch on the way. Grounded over to short, throw over to second for the final out of the inning. And they retire Stallings at second base for the final out. But the Southern League gets two runs across. And they cut the lead to six to two as we head to the top of the ninth. If you're buying, you got to see Ryan at Steve and Toyota, where every new Toyota car, truck, van, and SUV is smile price now to save you more. And every certified used Toyota on the lot is also smile priced at Steve and Toyota, where you get more for your trade, more credit options to help you get approved, and exceptional service after the sale, too. If you're buying, you got to see Ryan at Steve and Toyota. to the top of the ninth inning. Valley League leading 6-2 in the 2019 Southeast College Baseball Prospects Showcase. The Valley League taking on the Southern Collegiate Baseball League in game one of this week's showcase. And they'll come to the plate try to preserve their 6-2 lead. Maybe even increase that lead a little bit. Leading off will be Mason Przoski. He should be followed by Kasiski and Nagel in the lineup. So he comes up, strolls up to the plate, digging into the left-handed batter's box to lead things off. He struck out his last time up. Now he comes into the game facing Nash Jamison who Last inning, walked a couple of batters, but didn't allow anyone to score. The 1 0 pitch on the way from Jamison, and that one misses outside. Two balls and no strikes to Prusoski. The 2 0 pitch hit right back at the first baseman and caught out of the air the line drive fly out for the first out of the inning and that will bring up Andrew Kaziski, the second baseman from Winchester make that Purcellville Kaziski's from Purcellville and he is Standing in the box as the first pitch goes sailing over his head. 1 0. He attends Hampton, Sydney, where he plays baseball there, a native of Chesapeake, Virginia. He batted 269 with 29 RBIs at Hampton, Sydney this year. The 1 0 pitch on the way, and that one misses low and outside. 2 0 to Kaziski. Jameson misses on the 2-0 offering, and now it's three balls and no strikes. Top of the ninth, Valley League leading 6-2. The 3-0 pitch on the way. Now it misses high, a four-pitch walk to Kasiski. That'll take us back to the top of the order. Jed Bryant back in the lineup, coming up to the plate. Bryant had two at-bats in the fourth and the sixth. He had an RBI double in one and then grounded out in the other. Now he comes up with one out and a runner on first. 
First pitch on the way from Jamison. Taken for a called strike. Nothing in one to Bryant, the left fielder for the Turks. Out of Wingate University. The 0 1 pitch. That one is pop foul over the press box. And it's 0 2. Jamison comes set from the stretch, kicks and delivers the 0-2 pitch, and that one is a grounder down the third baseline, rolling foul. And the count's going to stay at 0-2 to Bryant. Bryant, a native of Lexington, North Carolina. He's a big Washington Redskins fan. They're his favorite professional sports team as the 0-2 pitch popped up shallow left field and drifting back and making the catch is the shortstop and two outs now in the inning. Coming back into the lineup is Sonny Deshera. He's a designated hitter for the Valley League. Two outs and a runner on first. Pitch on the way from Jamison. Breaking ball. Misses high and outside. 1-0. and Valley League getting close to a victory here in the first game of this showcase. They've never lost a game in the Southeast Prospect Showcase. Although they have tied once. Two zero count to Deshara. As Jamison comes set, looks back over at first, kicks and delivers. That one misses high, three balls and no strikes. To the designated hitter from Strasburg. Now Jamison with the three zero pitch on the way. It misses inside. He draws a four-pitch walk, and he'll head down to first base. Kasiski heads to second, and there's two runners on for the Valley League with two outs and West Clark at the plate. Now playing 14, West Clark. Clark started the game at catcher, batting in the three-hole for the Valley League. Nick Tony came in later in the game, and then Tony left with an apparent injury. We're not exactly sure what happened there, but... Clark is back in the game. First pitch on the way from Jamison. Inside, gets past the catcher, and both runners will take off. And now there's runners on second and third for the Valley League with two outs. They have a 6-2 lead as we play in the top of the ninth. And the 1-0 pitch to Clark hits him. He'll head down to first base. Bases loaded full of Valley Leaguers. As Josh Madole comes up to the plate. And Nash Jamison struggling in his second consecutive inning. He walked a couple of batters, hit a batter in the eighth inning, and now he's walked two and hit one. Here in the ninth. Madol at the plate. First pitch on the way from Jamison. That one in there for a called strike. It's 0-1. Madol and Andrew Check splitting time at first base in this afternoon's game. The 0-1 pitch. Just outside, and the count evens up at one and one. Madol, one of the top hitters in the league this year, batting 358. That ranks in the top 10 in hitters in the Valley Baseball League. 
The 1-1 pitch misses low and outside. Two balls and a strike to the first baseman out of UNC Greensboro. He'll be a junior there this year. Had a pretty good game there, or a pretty good year this year at UNC Greensboro. He, at one point, had an eight-game hit streak. He reached base in 20 straight games. Batted 262 with 21 RBIs in his freshman year at UNC Greensboro. The 2-2 pitch on the way. Misses Hine inside. He has to lean out of the way to avoid that one. And a full count to Madol. With two outs in the inning and bases loaded. The Valley League already leads 6-2. Jameson comes set on the mound from the stretch. Kicks and delivers. Runners go, and that one misses high. And Madol draws a walk that will bring home Kaziski. And it's 7-2 to two in favor of the Valley League. Dominic Boselli at the plate now, one of three players in the lineup that have not been subbed out, along with Jackson Tate and Christian Torres. First pitch on the way to Baselli. That's a called strike, nothing in one. The 0 1 pitch misses high and inside, and the count evens up at 1 and 1 to Baselli, who has a two run home run in the seventh inning. He's also singled and walked on the night. 1-1 one, one pitch, misses inside, two balls and a strike. He's got the bases loaded here with two outs. So a chance to drive in some more runs here in the top of the ninth inning. 2-1 pitch, misses upstairs. Three balls and a strike to Baselli. Jamison struggling to find the zone right now. He issued a four-pitch walk to DeShera. He hit Clark, walked Madol. And now has a 3-1 count on Baselli. The pitch on the way. Popped up. Straight above home plate. Jameson calls it off. He makes the catch. And that will end the inning. One run across for the Valley League in the top of the ninth. They lead 7-2 as we head to the bottom of the ninth inning. So at Sheets, we really exist to make people's lives easier every day. In this moment, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to connect with some of our lucky fans to help make their dreams come true. How are you, I'm Ryan Sheets. Here's a brand new truck for you, man. A once in a lifetime dream vacation to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been anywhere. <laughs> a check for $25,000. This is a testament to why everybody should be a Sheets free. Getting ready for the bottom of the ninth inning. Southern Collegiate League going to come up to the plate. They've got five runs to make up if they want to at least keep this thing going. Valley League leads 7-2 to two in the bottom of the ninth. It'll be Scotty Lee leading it off for the Southern League. He's one of the few batters that has not been subbed out this game, although he's gone 0 for 3 with a fly out and two strikeouts. And he'll face Cole McNamee on the mound, the Harrisonburg Turks pitcher who came in in last inning in the 8th to relieve Alex Hopp. He'll close it out in the bottom of the ninth for the Valley League.
So Lee will dig into the batter's box and he'll get ready to kick his inning off. The first pitch on the way misses outside, 1-0. That can be working from the stretch with nobody on. 1-0 pitch is fouled off down the first baseline. And the county ends up at 1-1. One one. McNamee with the 1-1 one one pitch. Pop foul. Same place on the first base side. And the count moves to a one and two, a ball and two strikes to Lee, who has yet to reach base tonight. He's struck out his last two at-bats. Awaiting the one-two offering from McNamee. Here it comes, popped up, right field. And the catch is made for the first out of the inning. One down. Two outs away from a Valley League win here in Cary, North Carolina. Jordan Harley at the plate now. Pitch on the way. It takes a big cut. Swing and a miss. Nothing in one. Harley from Wingate University. Plays college ball with Jed Bryant of the Valley League. The 0 1 pitch misses low and inside. He's a native of the state of North Carolina. His favorite team, favorite baseball team, is the Atlanta Braves. However, his favorite athlete of all time is Johnny Bench, who played for the Cincinnati Reds. 1 1 pitch, swing and a miss, and now it's 1 and 2. He is a catcher, though, and Johnny Bench is arguably the greatest catcher of all time, so it makes sense that he would be his favorite player. 1-2 pitch grounded right back to McNamee. He'll come off the mound and make the throw to his teammate Josh Madol over at first. And now the two down in the inning. Just one out away from a Valley League victory as Gilbert comes up to the plate. Jordan Gilbert from the Concord Athletics. He plays his college ball at Lander University. First pitch on the way from McNamee in there for a called strike. 0-1. Oh the 0-1 oh pitch, McNamee fires it in there and it misses low and outside. The count evens up at 1-1. One one. Two outs in the inning, nobody on. A 7-2 lead for the Valley League as they play in the first game of this week's showcase. 1-1 one, one pitch, just low below his knees, and it's a 2-1 count to Gilbert. McNamee with the 2-1 offering just outside, and it's three balls and a strike. Lyman is waiting on deck should Gilbert reach and keep the game alive for the Southern League. The 3-1 pitch misses outside and it's a walk. Gilbert heads down to first and Lyman will come up to the plate now with a chance to make something happen. Southern League's hope rests in him at the plate. Two outs and they're trailing seven to two. McNamee fires the first offering in there and misses high. Oh, one oh pitch on the way. 
Field umpire says he went around on the check swing, so it's a strike one and one. The count evens up. Lyman, a native of Florida, attended Lando Lakes High School in Florida where he played baseball in addition to playing basketball. Now he's at West Alabama and playing summer ball for the Piedmont Pride. The 1-1 one -one pitch, high and outside. Two balls and a strike. It's Braden Lyman. Just trying to keep this game going for the Southern League as there's two outs in the bottom of the ninth. The 2 on pitch, a swing and a miss, and the count evens up at 2-2. Two and two. McNamee set on the mound, peering in and awaiting the sign from West Clark behind the plate. He comes set. He's got his glove out in front of him, ready for the 2-2 two -two offering. He kicks and delivers. A swing and a miss, and he sets down Lyman for the final out of the game. And then Andrew Kosiski scoring the final run of the ball game in the top of the ninth to make it 7-2. to two. The Valley League gets the victory over the Southern Collegiate Baseball League in Game 1 of the Southeast Baseball Prospect Showcase. Reminder, the Valley League will be back in action tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. when they take on the Florida League right here at Coleman Field, and we'll have all the action for that game as well. Once again, the final score, Valley League 7, Southern League 2. That does it for our coverage of the first game in the Southeast Baseball Prospect Showcase. Thank you all for listening. Many thanks to the folks here at USA Baseball and the town of Cary for making our stay hospitable. Thank you to Craig Orndorff for covering for me back home in Harrisonburg tonight. And thanks for to Graham Knight for getting us on the air today. And thank you all for listening. The Valley League wins it 7-2. For the Valley League, I'm Matthew Atkins signing off from Cary, North Carolina. Well, that wraps up all the action from here tonight. I'm Graham Knight, and on behalf of the Valley Baseball League, we want to thank our sponsors. This live stream was made possible by Sheets. Sheets is perfect for busy lifestyles, and they're always open 24-7. So grab breakfast, dinner on the go, or a late night snack. With nearly 600 stores in six states, there's always a Sheets near you. Sheets, run and done. This live stream is also brought to you by Subway. Check out Subway's delicious new club collection, the new Steak Club, new Southwest Chicken Club, and the American Club. Subway, make it what you want. This live stream is also brought to you by Grace Burroughs, best-selling New York Times author. If you can't find romance on the baseball diamond, take a look at graceburrows.com. Grace Burroughs, she believes in love and baseball. Before we say goodnight, I want to remind you that this live stream is copywritten by the Valley Baseball League and may not be used in any form of media whatsoever without the express written consent of the Valley Baseball League. If you'd like to use our media, please contact me, Graham, at isomermedia.com. That's Graham, G-R-A-H-A-M, at isomer, I-S-O-M-E-R-M-E-D-I-A. From all of us at the Valley Baseball League, thank you for watching and good night.